private jets, luxury vacations, a free RV, according to ProPublica. That's how Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas apparently lives his life. But it wasn't always like that. Back in 2000, about a decade into his tenure on the Supreme Court, he complained about his salary, and I mean openly, to a member of Congress, saying if lawmakers didn't act, quote, one or more justices will leave soon, unquote. Now, his salary at the time was $173,600, about $300,000 in today's money. Now, fast forward to 2019, and Thomas seems to have changed his tune. Right now, what is the compensation of a justice of the Supreme Court? Oh, goodness, I think it's plenty. <laughs> uh. <laughs> My wife and I are doing fine. We don't, we don't live extravagantly, but we are fine. Well, a few weeks after that speech, he hopped on the private jet with one of his billionaire friends and headed off to Indonesia, where he and his wife, Jenny, vacationed on that friend's 162-foot yacht. Sounds fine to me. So what happened in those 20 years that made Thomas go from nearly resigning due to his salary to now being seemingly more than just fine? Joining me now with Justin Elliott. He's a reporter at ProPublica and one of the authors of A Delicate Matter. Clarence Thomas's private complaints about money sparked fears he would resign. You know, Justin, I'm glad that you're glad you're here. Thank you so much for joining us because you're reporting that Justice Thomas told a lawmaker that Supreme Court justices should get a raise or that he feared one or more will leave soon. That's his quote. So what happened after he raised concerns about his salary? Yeah, well, it, it raised alarms. I mean, the, the congressman who's now retired, who I talked to, said that he left that conversation worried that Justice Thomas uh, was the justice that was going to resign, you know, in, in short order if Congress didn't raise salaries for justices. So that congressman pushed uh, to get the salaries raised. Uh, another top official in the judiciary wrote a memo to the chief justice at the time of the Supreme Court and said, uh, you know, this, this seems like a crisis. What should we do about it? Um, interestingly, Congress never actually got its act together to give the justices a raise. Uh, but as you mentioned, um, this was the same period when Justice Thomas was really be beginning to develop relationships with a number of very, very wealthy businessmen who started paying for various things in his life. You know, he paints himself, and I, I note, of course, that that money that he was earning at the time, he said that compared to now, is about $300,000. And, you know, he changed his tune quite significantly. He sort of paints himself now as a kind of everyman. Listen to this. I prefer the RV parks. I prefer the Walmart parking lots to the beaches and things like that. There's something normal to me about it. I've come from regular stock, and I prefer that. I prefer being around that. So you hear him talking about that, and we're showing the audience at different points some of the gifts that he purportedly received, by the way, from, from his wealthy benefactors. Um, and some would look at this as a big contrast to the, the supposed everyday man. I don't, I'm not doubting that he, in fact, likes to do what he has said he does and likes being in those places. But there's a disconnect for some, hearing the, Republic, the Pro Republica reporting and what he's saying there. Can you help us understand that context? Sure, yeah. I mean, so as, as you pointed out, I mean, as a Supreme Court justice, he makes around $300,000 a year, which, you know, is, is far more than the average American, but doesn't make you super rich. Um, but what, what we and others have found is that there's a small set of you know wealthy, in some cases billionaire businessmen, many of them Republican political donors, who have stepped into Justice Thomas's life and really subsidized his lifestyle, elevated it to a le to the level of uh, you know a, the CEO of a company or you know a, a rich businessman. Um, so what we found, he has been taken on you know literally dozens of of, of international vacations on private jets, uh, super yachts. Um, the Dallas businessman Harlan Crow paid around $100,000 of private school tuition for uh, Justice Thomas's relative who the justice was was raising. Um, 
in fact, the the very high end RV he talked about in that clip, which goes for uh, he paid around half a million dollars for it in today's dollars. Um, turns out that money actually was loaned to him by a friend who later forgave the loan. Um, so we we've seen a you know really uh, as far as we know unprecedented pattern of uh, wealthy businessmen subsidizing the life of a Supreme Court justice. Uh, so even though the salary was never significantly raised by Congress, uh, he was able to a- attain this higher lifestyle thanks to these people that, that came into his life. Now, he would suggest, of course, this is merely coincidental, that he, they didn't, that nobody was giving him anything in return for something, judicial favor or a favorable ruling of any kind. He would, he would write this off as merely coincidental and the perks of a friendship like anybody else. And he, I'm sure, argues that ProPublica has just been picking on him, Justin, and that they're trying to single him out. What's your reaction to that, given, of course, there has been recently, obviously, this this code of conduct now that has been issued by the Supreme Court? Not a lot of teeth behind it, I admit that. But what is your reaction to his statements that suggest this is merely coincidental and nothing that even hints at impropriety? Yeah, well, I guess a couple of things. One is that we've been talking to a lot of judges, Republicans and Democrats, liberals and conservatives, and we've been struck by uh, how just across the board, ideologically, judges have told us they wouldn't even let a lawyer buy them lunch for $30, let alone take you know $100,000 of private school tuition or dozens of free vacations. So uh, the reason we've been writing about Justice Thomas is we simply haven't found anything even close to like this uh, when, when it comes to the other justices. Um, you know, uh, Justice Thomas didn't comment for this latest story. We did talk to, uh, I spoke to a Yale law professor who has spent time with Justice Thomas and, and his principal benefactor, Harlan Crowe, is vacation with them. And that professor's view of the relationship was, look, uh, I don't, he doesn't think that Harlan Crowe is trying to influence Justice Thomas's views he, he thinks that Harlan Crow is trying to keep him comfortable. He thinks his salary isn't isn't high enough, and therefore he provides these benefits to him to sort of elevate his lifestyle. Uh, so, but you know, as, as you pointed out at the beginning of the segment, um, Justice Thomas's recent public comments about his salary are very, very different than what he was saying uh, privately twenty years ago, and the salary has not changed.